Hi, it's Dr. Nadia here, founder of the Doyen Agency and host of Straight Talk About Sales with Dr. Nadia. You know, recently I received an email from a good friend of mine and it said, I need to talk. <laughs> so I was like, uh oh, what's going on? And I sent her a message back and I was like, when are you available? So we set up some time and we had a chat. And once we jumped on the phone, um, what she shared with me, honestly, I wasn't expecting, but she talked about how she um, is working a job. And when she accepted the position, she didn't negotiate her salary. Now she's at this place where she's like, I'm underpaid. I know I deserve more. I'm kicking myself because I should, I knew better. I should have negotiated. But more importantly, she's also looking at her business. See, she has a side hustle. And eventually she'd love to leave her job and work on her side hustle full time, right? So then it would no longer be her side hustle. But the problem is she's not making enough money in her side hustle either to replace her full time job because the problem is also carrying over to her business and that she's not charging the prices that she needs to charge in order to be able to leave her job or even make the money she knows she deserves to make. Sound familiar? Trust me, I have so been there on both fronts. Even when I knew I should have negotiated my salary when I was still in corporate, there were times that I didn't. And I know from experience there have been times when I've undercharged in my business or I've been nervous about adjusting my prices or upping my prices or whatever it can, you know, whatever mindset challenges may arise around money and pricing. It's also a conversation I have a lot with mostly women entrepreneurs around raising their prices, charging more for their services, or really looking at what it is that they want to make in their business. I also recently had an opportunity to speak with a potential client. And as I was talking to her about her business and really just seeking to understand what it was that she did, how I could best serve her, but then looking at her current pricing structure and her offers, and one thing I noticed, it was a recurring theme, is she would say a price, or, uh, you know, let's just say one of her packages was $1,000. She would say, so no, you know, typically the price for this is $1,000, but I usually give a discount. Like this just kept going on and on, over, like every single time it was like, this is the price, but here's the discount. There was not a single time as she talked about all of her different packages where there wasn't a price but there was a lower discount that was usually what people, like no one ever paid full price ever. And I was like, dude, what is going on with this? So we talked about it and it just goes, you know, it's just that mindset thing. And for her, you know, I was like, what do you feel is your biggest challenge around this? And she was just like, you know, asking for money. Trust me, I can relate. <laughs> I have so been there. Being able to put yourself out there and your work and you know you love what it is that you do most of us would do this for free and then you're asked to add a price tag and it's like what and then like all these things start rolling through our minds it's just crazy town so what do you do how do you overcome this that was the question my girlfriend asked me like i need you to help me snap out of it like she was really frustrated with herself for not doing the things that she knew she should have done and now she's faced with the prospect of having to have this really, really uncomfortable conversation asking for her salary to be adjusted. And she doesn't know if it's going to happen. And, you know, that, that opens Pandora's box or in and of itself just around some of the emotions or things that may come up for you when you're an employee. And you're like, dude, I know I deserve to make more. So what do you do? How do you move past this? This whole dilemma around pricing. How do I price how do I make sure I'm asking for the, what it is that I want? Because honestly, and I won't do this in this video. I'll make sure a separate one about this. But this whole thing about work, that's a whole other conversation. And I don't like it when I'm working with clients around pricing to base it on their worth for a number of reasons. But one of the main reasons is it just brings up all these questions around worthiness, which has absolutely nothing to do with your ability to deserve, to not to deserve, to deliver results, right? That's a whole separate conversation. But a lot of times when it comes to pricing and sales and all that, it all gets muddled up together and it's just a hot, 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 hot mess, right? So today I wanted to just share some quick tips around moving past that 
some of the things I shared with my friend and also with this potential client. And I honestly shared this a lot. Sometimes I have to share it with myself, right? Because I'm not immune to getting stuck in that cycle around what do I charge? How do I stick to firm to my charges, to my pricing, especially if I'm up leveling and I'm charging a new price, you know, maybe I raise my prices which I encourage everyone to do for next year. <laughs> I mean, it's Q4, why not? Anywho, um, so just really looking at that. So the first thing I want you to do is forgive yourself. Just, you know, the past is the past. You can't undo it. And we don't really have a whole lot of time to sit around and waddle in the fact that you made a mistake or you didn't take an action that you knew you should have taken. It's done. And you can't undo it in terms of you can't go back and undo. you may be able to correct it or may you may not be but the thing is yeah, you, there's nothing you can do about it right um so you can only move forward from here so just let it go forgive yourself whatever that looks like just let it go we spend a lot of times i believe especially as women just spend way too much time stuck in this this trap of beating ourselves up around things that we should have done we could have done we would have done right and it's not serving you, it's not helping you, um, and it's not helping you to serve your clients. So just forgive yourself. Acknowledge it, yeah, I made a mistake. Um, like I said, I'm not immune to it, I've done it before. Um, but it's me staying there and you staying there, and that was one of the big things when I started with my girlfriend, say, just, you know, forgive yourself. Yeah, you could have, you could have asked for more money. You probably should have asked for more money, but you didn't. So here's what you get to do. You know, you can go back and you can ask, you can make adjustments now. We also look at how to charge in your business so you can just let your job go all together, right? You know, so there are things that you can do and to start the strategy to move you forward, but don't let yourself stay there. The first thing is forgive yourself. Acknowledge that it happened. Forgive yourself, okay? Capiche? All right. The second thing, and this was a great question, this is often a question I ask clients when we're working on pricing strategies and things like that, or even goals. You know, a lot of my clients right now, we're already looking at, we haven't completed it. As clients, we're done, right? We already know what 2019 looks like. A couple of us are still working on it, but how much money do you want to make? And that's huge. You know, a lot of times, it's, you know, when I work with clients, that's like, whoa, wait a minute. What? Yes. How much money do you want to make? This is your business. How much money do you want to make? How much money, not even just in your business, because I know a lot of times we talk about revenue and top line revenue. How much money do you want to take home? Do you want in your bank account, in your purse, <laughs> in your pocketbook, whatever you call it, right? How much money do you want? Now, it was a really cool thing. Last year, um, I put myself on payroll. So at the end of last year, I had that conversation with my husband. And you know, we were in the kitchen and we were just kind of goofing off and being funny, but it was kind of like, how much money you want me to bring home, babe? You know, that kind of thing. But, you know, you get to ask yourself that question. How much money do you want to make? And one of the things, even for me, this year there was a number. And, they, you know, I'm excited to say I've stuck with it. And it's been consistent. And it's exciting. And then, you know, about halfway through the year, I was like, you know what? I want to give myself a raise. Right? But, you know, having that conversation about what it is that you desire. How much money do you desire to make? And no, there is no right or wrong answer. And sometimes we get so caught up in what people say we should be doing or what it should look like. What is that number that works for you? And let's start there. Because everything else we can center around, what do you want? What do you desire? What do you want to see? It's totally up to you. You get to choose, which I know can be a bit daunting. So I want you to think about that. How much money do you desire to make in 2019? And it could be top line revenue if that's the number you choose. In my business, we set several different types of goals. How much money does Nadia want to make, right? That's my desire, my personal goal. But then also, how much money does, do I want top line revenue for my business and for the agency? But then also, how much money, because of what I do, do I want to help my clients make? So we have a couple of different goals, right? But the thing is, to have that conversation and put it out there and set goals, like stretch. Like my 2019 revenue goal is like, it's making me almost want to hyperventilate, but <laughs> great. But I was having a conversation with some colleagues and one of my colleagues, he looked at me, he goes, Nadia, you know, there's that safe goal. Um, the safer is to stretch from what we've done like this year. But he was like, imagine if you were to double your safe, like your original stretch goal. And I was like, what? But he was like, the, your, the actions that you will take 
to try to reach the stretch of your stretch will look very different. And he's like, so what if you don't make it? What if you only get 80%? But that's still more than what you would have made with your, my original goal. And it was like, whoa, okay, all right. So I'm settling into that. And I have time because we're not done with 2018, right? So what is that for you? What is that goal that you want to set for yourself? And then there's that original goal. And then I invite you to, you know, double it. What is that? What's the stretch of your stretch? Because I guarantee you the actions that you take will look very different to achieve the stretch of your stretch if you were to put it out there. And it's caused me to really think differently about achieving my goals and what that would look like. And I'm like, well, I can't do it by myself. You know, like there's all these conversations that are going on even right now as I think about what that goal would look like and but also what that would mean for me and my clients. Like, how cool is that? So really thinking about that and start there. How much money do you desire to make? Part B to that is, and I think this is important because, you know, we set money revenue goals and we talk about money and sometimes money is really uncomfortable to talk about. But the part B to this is who's fun for you to work with, right? There are the people, um, I actually spoke at an event this past weekend and one of the speakers, um, her name is Pam Lislin. She's the author of Escape from Cubicle Nation, if anyone knows her. She is an amazingly phenomenal woman. One of the things that she talked about was, you know, the phases of growth in your business. And there's that phase in your business when you are just so excited about just having someone with a pulse and a credit card, right? It doesn't matter. Like all your criteria around personas and ideal clients are kind of sketchy <laughs> at best, right? It's like, oh my gosh, someone said yes. And they were willing to give me credit card. They're willing to pay me for my services, right? But then after a while, you get a little more discerning, I hope, around who you work with and what that looks like. And that's why I added this as a 2B <laughs> for this one is because there's that point around really getting clear on what you desire to make from a revenue standpoint. But then there's also that other part that I think is just as equally important and sometimes if not more important around who you get to work with. The beauty of being a business owner, entrepreneur is you get to choose who you work with. It's not like in corporate where you come to work and you may or may not have any say and your coworkers or your team or whatever that may look like, depending on your position in the company, but you get to pick. And when you're having these sales conversations, you get to decide whether or not you say yes or no to that person of being a client of yours. So that is the other part of this I want you to really think about. And you may not be in a position just yet to say no. You're like, Nadia, that sounds fabulous, but I'm not quite there yet. No worries. But I want you to really start thinking about it. Something that, you know, in my company, we're constantly looking at, constantly thinking about, at least I am, like, who is fun for me to work with? What does that look like? Where do we excel? What is just, you know, that excitement that continues most days, right, to keep you going? Because the, the only worst thing than not having, like, any money in your business and you're not making any money is working with clients that just don't like you up. And it's like, this is horrible. I did all this work to work with people that I don't even like to work with. Like that is, that is, that's a sad day, at least by Nadia's standards. So I put that in there because I really want you to get clear on one, how much money do you desire to make? And part B to that is who would be fun to make that money with, right? Who would be fun to work with and make that money with? You may, for those of you who are at that point in your business where you're able to like build team, you know, who would be part of your team to also help make that? So, you know, I'll add that too as you're thinking about what that looks like for your company. All right, number three. This is the one where we struggle big time. And I throw myself in there because I'm not immune to any of this. Some of the stuff I've worked through, some of these things I still have to work through. Like I get a pro make some progress and it's like, ooh, I still got some work to do, right? Um, number three is own your greatness, or I like to call your yumminess, right? You're great. You're good at what you do. You're more than qualified. It's in you. Yeah, there's more greatness that can come out of it, right? Own it. That is the one thing I see us do a lot of is discount our greatness. And I'm talking to entrepreneurs about pricing and, you know, there's this fear or sometimes this thing around who am I, right? Who am I to, to charge this or what have I done? Or maybe I need to do more. No matter how many degrees, certifications, certificates, I mean, years of experience, 
I don't know what it is, but it comes up sometimes. Those gremlins that start talking, those voices in your head that start to make you doubt yourself or cause you to start to compare yourself to someone else. Don't do that. Own your greatness, own your skills, own your experience, own your insight, own your gifts. Some of this part of the reason why we discount it is because it comes so natural to us. Where it's almost like breathing. And you're like, really? I'm a charge people because I'm breathing? Yes. <laughs> so own it. Really own that greatness in you and look at the, the value that you provide for your clients and not make it about you in terms of worthiness, in terms of charging what you're worth. But think about the time, the money, the headaches, the stress, the sleepless nights, like all the things that your clients no longer have to deal with as a result of working with you. And that is most likely priceless. So guess what? You have a lot of room between zero and priceless to come up with a good number that feels good and to help you achieve your revenue goals. And then step four is take action. Like we talk about a lot of stuff. We watch videos, we read books, you know, we, we do all these different things. But the biggest thing, you won't see anything different until you take action. And I have to add this, baby steps count. So many times when we're trying to right size, like even my girlfriend, she's like, you know, right sizing my salary is a big step because of where I am. Well, in her you know, big is relative, right? Big for corporate and what they typically do. I'll put it that way. Um, in terms of writing her salary and getting it to where it needs to be. And sometimes it feels the same way even in our business and we've been charging a certain amount and then we're looking and we're like, crap, I need to make this adjustment, you know, in, in pricing. So one of the things you can do is baby step it. So you may not go for $50 to $900 to $10,000 or whatever that looks like, right? But you may do $50 to 200 and then 200 to 500 and then 500 to 1,000. You know, so really looking at what that looks like. Put together a plan. The thing is though, start to take action. I have a client we work when we started working together last year. I want, we wouldn't even talk about what these prices were looking like. Let's just say we raised some prices. And it was interesting, and this is the part B to number four. Four has also a B, right? Part B to that is expect to be tested. Expect it. Expect that someone's going to say something that's going to cause you to doubt or, you know, question why you priced it that way. Your current clients are going to have something to say. They may not like it. They, are, they may have their own judgment around it expect it and be prepared for it. So you have your contingency plan in place. So like I said, one of my clients, we, we went through this. When I started working with her, she was doing all right, right? Um, in her business, she was actually just shy of clearing a six, uh, six figures in a year, but her prices were, oh my gosh, her prices were low and she was working herself in the ground. She was like, I, I just can't, I can't keep doing this, right? So we started adjusting her prices and there were lots of things that we did. And her prices based on from where they were last year to this year is, oh my gosh, right? But here's the thing. And people complain. They whine, they bellyache. People had judgment. I mean, some of them were not so nice. And they gave me, they, thankfully she had a Nadia on her team. I took the brunt of that. You know, people shared that with me. Um, I was selective in what I shared. I gave her the essence, right? She didn't even know all that. Um, of what it was because at the end of the day they were no longer her clients and I needed her to stay focused on where we were going and not on the fact that people were having temper tantrums because basically they couldn't get all that greatness at Walmart basement prices anymore like that wasn't happening and so I, I share that because I, I want you to be prepared that some kind of way you're going to be tested you know whether you decide to to lower prices to stop doing some certain things in your business you know whatever that looks like as you make that shift in raising your prices or you know how you consolidate or adjust your services someone is going to have something to say someone is going to test you someone's going to see basically are you serious about making this commitment to yourself and to the revenue goals that you set for yourself so i don't want you to be shocked if people start belly aching and complaining, I don't want you to be like, Dr. Nadia told me to raise my prices and now no one's buying. Just ride it out. Stick with it. Take the action. Take the baby steps. Don't give up. You may have to start talking. Like those people that you're working with right now at this price may not. Chances are they won't. 
go with you. If they do, great. But if you don't have the expectation that they will, then that takes a lot of pressure off of you. Like, okay, great. Now I have to go and adjust who I'm talking to and what that conversation looks like in order to move this ball to where I want it to be. And then finally, number five, track your results. Find a tool, a resource, or whatever that you need to track your results. When I first started, I just said, uh, when I, let me take that back. When I was consistent and I actually did it for real, because there were things that I started and I didn't do it. I, didn't, I wasn't consistent. You know how it is, January 1st, we all have some kind of commitment that we don't keep. At least that was the case for me. And I was like, I'm going to track this year. I'm going to do it right. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I didn't. I would start off and then by March, it was just a hot mess if I made it that long. But when I started being consistent, and I, I also I saw my revenue increase. That's why I'm so big on tracking your results because I know it works. Um, but it was a really simple tool. I didn't even go out and buy anything, right? I just set up a Google Sheet. And the reason why I set up a Google Sheet was because I had accountability that I shared, that I was able to share that sheet with my accountability team. Um, but then they, they were able to see my results in real time. And I don't know if they ever looked at it, right? Because anytime we talked about it, I was the one driving a conversation. It wasn't like they came to the conversation like, well, I looked at your number this month, right? But just knowing that somebody could take a peek was what was enough for me to keep me to commit to myself and be accountable to myself to track my results so that then I could actually achieve the goals that I set for myself. So whatever that looks like, it's creating a Google Sheet is free. And then if you have accountability team or your business coach or whomever that is for you, you can share that if you choose to so that they can hold you accountable. There are some other resources. One that I, I, like, to, um, I like to recommend, <laughs> my counsel has recommended that I use it, um, is YNAB or You Need a Budget. Um, I think it's only like 50 bucks a year. Um, it's a really great resource. But I, I encourage you to just whatever it is that it takes to get you on track, to track your results so that you can see. And you know, or even when it comes to uh, your conversations or getting feedback from potential clients, as we are talking a lot about pricing and you know, really having those types of conversations, a courage diary, whether you, you use the one that I created or you create your own, in terms of tracking the conversations you're having, really listening to what people are saying. What is it around the pricing, you know, as you position your pricing, uh, your new pricing to people, how are they responding? How are you feeling? Because that a lot of times is even more important than what they're saying is how are you feeling? And how are you interpreting what you think you're hearing from other people is really key. So taking time to track that as well. And you'll start to see some trends. You'll start to see some different results. But I guarantee you, this is going to start to move you in the direction that you want to go. But you know, that big question is why am I not charging enough, right? It's is so is so important and it's so multi-layered like i know this is a short video and it talks about a couple of different things but it, it's it's a layered thing and so you really taking time to to look at that and get support whatever that support looks like business coach therapist um counseling um life coach is there some trauma around it get the support that you need in order to move forward but you know, commit to asking for what it is that you want or what it is that you desire. And money and people investing with you and paying a good wage for doing that and, and investing, you know, is, is part of that desire. I desire to be paid well for the work that I do. I feel that I deserve it too. <laughs> so, you know, being willing to ask for it though is, is, is key. So are you going to make those commitments, that commitment to yourself and stick with it. And again, get accountability if you need it. So again, really quick. Whew, I know I talked about a lot. This is a long one today. All right. Number one, forgive yourself. Number two, how much money do you desire to make? Definitely write that down and track it. How are you going to get there? Two, B, who is fun for you to work with? Like as you're making this money, who would it be fun for you to work with to make it? Uh, number three, own your greatness. Number four, take actions. Baby steps do count. 4B, expect to be tested. Oh yeah, the test is coming. And number five, track your results. And if you would like some support around pricing, go over, head on over to 
www. Who ever says that anymore? Anyway, uh, meet with Dr. Nadia.com. That's meet with Dr. Nadia.com. Schedule some time for us to chat. And we can kind of hash it out around what does that look like if we're a good team to support you and figuring out what the heck do I charge for my services and programs that would be great. And if we're not, hey, we know some pretty cool resources, especially with some of this other stuff, money, mindset, Christine Walsh, we did an um, interview recently, great resource around that. Um, and some other people, I won't go down that whole list, that's like a whole separate video. But if you need some support around that, shoot me an email. Um, on social media, if you want to send me a message, or like I said, schedule time for us to chat, and then I can, you know, we can talk about where you feel like you need the most support, and I'll be more than happy to make recommendations to you around who I feel like would be the best uh, support to move you forward in your business. All right, great talking about pricing today. I love it. Go out there and raise your prices. Charge something just out of control. See if someone actually pays it and that you stick to it and you don't back down. This is Dr. Nadia with another episode of Straight Talk About Sales with Dr. Nadia signing off. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.